Ladies and gentlemen, dreamers and doers, seekers of purpose and fulfillment, welcome to Passion on Purpose, the podcast that sets your soul on fire and ignites the spark within you. I'm your host, Steph Hilfer, and I'm beyond thrilled you're here. Passion on Purpose features leaders, experts, and sometimes me on center stage. We put the spotlight on visionaries, entrepreneurs, leaders, experts, and everyday heroes to share their journey of self-discovery, enthusiasm, and unwavering determination. We'll explore how they use their passion and purpose to fuel their brand. Alongside our leaders, we'll provide practical tips, actionable advice, and wisdom from our experts across various fields. So if you're ready to unleash your inner fire, shake off the doubts and insecurities, and pursue a life of purpose with unbridled enthusiasm, then let's dive in. All right, guys, we are back with, guess what? Can we get a drum roll? Do you guys hear that? Drum roll. We are back with our 100th episode of the Passion on Purpose podcast. I'm so excited. Um, I was off air with our guest who I will introduce here shortly. And I was celebrating. uh, I didn't even quite realize that this was our hundredth episode that we are recording. Um, As you guys have heard me mention over the last few weeks, every episode that gets closer to this just feels even more special. I don't know what it is about numbers, but something about hitting these milestones, it just is so rewarding. It's such a great reminder of How many amazing people I've been able to bring to your guys' attention, bring to the forefront of your mind for inspiration, for knowledge, for passion, for just hopefully a little fire under your butt to really realize that the world and business is shape-shifting. It is morphing into this deeper thing that we get to talk about on the show that I want you to feel empowered to talk about for yourself and your brand. And that hopefully with every episode, you get more and more inspired to see that the world is shifting, business is changing, and it's okay. And we don't have to live in the 1950s when there was no room for emotion in business, right? We get to bring a little bit more passion and purpose to the world. So with all of that said, please uh, help me welcome our 100th guest to the show, Nikki Krasik. She is the main woman in charge, head honcho, founder, creator of the circuit sales system. And I'm so excited because there is not a single one of us listening who can't benefit from some sales tactics and some ideas around sales, right? Thank you very much. So I'm so excited to dive in as we always do. Nikki, are you ready? Okay. We're going right in with our hard hitting question. What is your why? Um, you know, it's interesting because when I, I started, so we have a, a three brand business and when I started way back when my, why my first brand was to start a, to start a course, to make some money through teaching people how to become professional copywriters. And the funny thing, for some reason, it never occurred to me that it was actually going to impact people, <laughs> you know, when you're, you're just like, I'm just, yeah, I'm going to see if I can sell a course. And I can tell you now um almost 12,000 students later it is so incredibly meaningful on a d- and even the days when i'm like oh the business is hard blah, 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 but that that people actually say and it is so it's so i'm so proud and it's so humbling to hear this but that the course has changed their lives that this program has changed their lives and again i don't know what kind of goofball dummy I was that it never occurred to me that that could be an outcome. Um, but so the, the reason I started was I'm going to try to make some money. And the reason I keep doing it is, I mean, yes, money is lovely, but the fact that I can impact my, I can do it and my team can do it and the students impact each other. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's because, you know, like I said a minute ago, we don't, innately think, oh, I'm going to start a business, make impact, because what were we taught for so many years, right? Show up to work, show up on time, do the job, get the task done, get the paycheck, mm-hmm. go home, yeah. right? It wasn't, and and I'm not, you know, we're, we're in 2024, right? Things have evolved a lot since, and I, I'm saying 1950, and I'm being gracious, because even in my workforce in the 90s, in the eight, in the eight, oh, yeah. Well, 90s and the 2000s, I'm still feeling that. I'm still feeling like, gosh, this is just a show up, get it done, get the paycheck type of world. Um, And so it's not shocking for me to hear that you're like, I'm going to make a course, make some money. And the impact being 
this, the aftermath instead of mm -hmm. it being like, gosh, this could be my driver. Yeah. Well, and, and the impact really is what carried me through because, um, and we'll get into this a little bit more, but, you know, from, I, I started the course in, so my background is, I, I am a copywriter. My background is in copywriting. I've been a copywriter for more than 20 years now. So I started this course in that course, the, that brand, uh, in 2012. And it really wasn't until 2018 that I figured out how to sell it and how to sell it consistently without doing all the stuff that people say to do. But thank goodness it was a good course and it was having an impact because I would have students write in and say, oh my gosh, I lost my job, but because I had your course, I was able to get a full-time contract position with this amazing ad agency in Chicago or, you know, all that kind of stuff. And that, as much as I helped our students, our students helped me by giving me a reason to keep going and, mm -hmm. and cause you know, you, business is hard, right? There are days when it's amazing and there are plenty of days when it's really hard and it would be so easy to be like, forget it. I'm just going to get it, go get a job. Um, but when you have, right, like, uh, <laughs> Or I have all kinds of fantasies about like working at a bread shop and being like, would you like it sliced or not? No, great. Have a nice day. Easy. Anyway, yeah, right. Like, uh, I can't support my lifestyle with a bread shop, but you know, um, working at a bread shop. But uh, the see, this is tangents. This is where we yeah. go. But okay. without the students, um, without the students writing in and letting me know. I wouldn't have put in the effort to keep it going and I wouldn't have put in the time and the thought to figure out a strategy that actually worked, that worked for selling, that worked for me, that worked for my business, but also most importantly, worked for our students, worked for the people who are interested in joining the program and supported them in making a purchase instead of like penalizing them for having lives the way so many of the digital marketing systems operate now. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And so you, okay, I, I want to, I'll, I'll talk about this in a second, but I, I love diving a little bit deeper and even further back into time a little bit. I yeah. like to pretend I have this reverse crystal ball. So instead of seeing the future, I can go back into time. And I'm just kind of curious, like, what do we see if we're like fly on the wall, reverse crystal ball style, Nikki, five years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, like, what are we seeing? What are you like? What what kind of memories pop up when I paint that for oh, you? Interesting. So I always loved reading, always been a big reader. Um, and I think then too, I've always kind of been a, a good writer. It's uh, the two often you see kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, and my dad was a marketing director. He's since retired, but he was a marketing director. And so he would bring home extra work in high school. He'd bring home extra work for me to like help him out with and give me feedback. So I kind of had that training, but then interestingly, my mom, um, since retired as well, but she was an interior designer and worked for herself. So I had this element of like the writing background, but also the, the aesthetics is the aesthetics, but also the, the lack of fear of working for yourself, you know, yeah. of like, cause yeah. there's so many people who's, if their parents were raised, like get a, get a full-time job, that's what you have to do. It can be really hard to break free from that and think either I'm going to try freelancing or I'm going to start a business or something along those lines. So I was really lucky in that I had both of those perspectives mm -hmm. as I got into you know, I mean, I certainly worked, worked at, uh, worked at jobs, was, uh, worked in corporate, was freelance for actually most of my career was also at least freelance on top of a corporate job, if not full-time freelance as well. But I had a nice, a nice balance growing up. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice because we often model what was modeled to us, right? Mm -hmm. We see two people or one person in the household mm -hmm. with a corporate job, nine to five, you know, you just, it, you can't help, but, but feel like this is what I should model. Like it's yeah. human nature, right? So for you to have the blessing of seeing, you know, kind of both worlds in some way, like that's well, a blessing. Exactly. And I think too, you know, uh, our, the, the people around us love us so much and they give us advice and they worry for us, but they also only have their own perspective. Like we see this with our students, actually we see this with our students on all of our brands, right? Because either the copywriters are trying a new career, maybe they're thinking about freelancers on the freelance brand. They're thinking about freelancing on our circuit sales system brand, they're course creators who are building their own businesses. And if they come from families or maybe they're married to people who don't have an understanding of how that world works, there 
can be a lot of like, Ooh, that sounds like it's really, that sounds like it's really risky. Oh, I'm not sure that's going to work. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. You sure this internet thing isn't a scam, all of that kind of thing, because they're all coming from their own perspective. Um, and that could be a lot for a lot for anybody to overcome to when, when someone who loves you comes to you and says, I'm just really worried for you. I don't think this is going to work out for, it takes a lot of fortitude to say, I hear you. Thank you. I know you love me, but I'm going to do this anyway. And that's, it's something a lot of us have to overcome. Yeah. And it's, it's also an energy that's being bestowed upon you, right? Like, and that's a real challenge for a lot of freelancers, a lot of entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, you know, it is, you know, that's why they often say, you know, you really have to kind of cater and curate your, what do they say? Like the closest five to you really Mm -hmm. are, are kind of, kind of gives you your limit of what you can do. And so if you are surrounding yourself with even love, but with limiting beliefs or fears or worries, then you're going to continue to live in limiting beliefs, fears, and worries. Instead of, I can do this. I have drive. I can make this work. I'm going to make this work. Exactly. Or even that this is perfectly possible. I remember a couple of years ago, I was in uh, a mastermind and, um, you know, masterminds totally depend on the, on the people who are in it and the people who run in that kind of thing. This one was, this was a good one. It was a good experience. And we were sitting around having brunch or something. And one of the women next to me was talking about, she's like, Oh, you know, I think I want to get into real estate in addition to her business. She's like, I think I'd like to, I think I'd like to start with maybe, maybe three houses. And the woman across the table was like, Oh, you know what? You're going to find it so much easier. Once you get from one, it's like with kids, once you have more than one, then it's, it's so much easier. She's like, if you have the time, the bandwidth, go for for six next year because then it's one and I just remember sitting there and thinking like yeah, this is a good circle to be in. because it wasn't like oh I don't know is that mm-hmm. hard do you know it was a it was a yes of course you can do that absolutely and not only can you do that but maybe you should even be doing a little bit more than you're already thinking about yeah it was a very yeah. cool I kind of had the moment of sitting back and being like oh this is where I want to be these are the kind of people that I want to surround myself with it's a it's a good vibe yeah I love I love all of that because it is so present constantly, whether it's your business world, whether you're listening to this and you're thinking of your personal life, really like the energy, the conversations, the topics you're having, like those really do shape what you, you bring into your world every day. Um, I also love, so you, you kind of shared quickly, briefly that, you know, you, you started in the copywriting world and then you share that little Nikki is an avid reader, is a writer. Mm -hmm. Um, Tell me more about how did that copywriting, right? Because of course, as a young girl, what are we doing? We're writing essays. We're like, we're not writing poetry in our journals. I mean, there are some of us, but you know, most people are just like, I like to write because I have to for an assignment. But how did that mm-hmm. blossom beyond like to into something like, oh, I can make it, I can make a career of this. Yeah. Um, you know, it's I don't. I think I share with a lot of people who grew up writing that uh, we love to write. We have natural affinity for it. And at some point, someone said something along the lines of, oh, writers don't make any money. And at that moment, you go, oh, okay, I guess I'm going to have to do this on the side. I guess this is something I'm not going to make any money at. And the funny thing is, is that, like I said, my dad was a marketing director. So Mm -hmm. I was even aware of what copywriting was. So many of our students on that brand don't even know what it is until they come across one of our ads and then go, oh my gosh. But I even knew what it was, but because it was so in my head that, oh, writers don't make any money. You know, I went to school for PR and, um, and then got it. It was working at, it was managing or doing, you know, one of the managers at a health club for a while and just kind of trying to figure out where I wanted to go. And it, I, I had, quit that management job and then was just like teaching spinning and Pilates and aqua aerobics to pay the bills as I figured out what I wanted to do. Um, and my mom actually sent me, uh, sent me a book, um, which like this was pre Amazon days. So, you know, she went to Barnes and Noble, picked up that book, <laughs> put it in the mail. Cause that is what moms do. Um, and it was something, it was something called like the six figure writer or something like that. And um, the book itself was not overly useful. Cause it was like, you need a fax machine, get yourself a fax machine. You, every <laughs> business needs a fax machine. Like, okay, fax machine. Um, but what it did was reminded me that copywriting was a thing. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh yes. And I have done it before and I can do it. And because I was comfortable with the idea of kind of going out on my own, um, and also being 
what was I like 23, 24 at the time, my living expenses were a lot less. Uh, I could kind of go out, jump into it without necessarily knowing how to build up a freelance career. And obviously since then I have figured it out and today I don't actually do much freelancing more because I'm running the business, but um, that got me into copywriting and copywriting interestingly as i was working at a copy as a copywriter for a variety of different businesses then got me more involved in the digital world and talking with people who were working at the company but also on the side were talking about building their own kind of businesses and it's really funny like you're saying looking back the the reverse crystal ball it's really funny to see where your career takes you and those moments where you go, oh, because so-and-so said this to me or recommended this book to me, I checked that out and that took me to here and that mm -hmm. took me to here and that took me here to now here I am, 20, what, 2024, uh, with, yeah, three, ban three brands, a multi seven figure per year business. And I used to teach uh, aqua aerobics. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Exactly. And let me tell you, I made those women work. They People think that's an easy class, but I made those women work. I I believe you 100%. Yes. yes. <laughs> I think my favorite reason for asking the question, the reverse crystal ball question, mm -hmm. is that, you know, obviously it goes so in alignment with the show, but we tend to follow our passions, whether we recognize and spend the time to do that introspective journey. Yeah. Um, most of the people who end up on my show will do that little journey back and be like, wow, this passion has really always been there. And whether I recognize it or harness the power of that story and that passion of mine, you know, fully that that's, you know, to be left determined, but it's always there, you know, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, like you said, business is hard. We don't get into this because it's easy, quick buck. We get into it for that deeper purpose, that passion. And we just sometimes forget along the way and don't know how to pull that out sometimes. So that's that's why I love kind of going down that journey. And I love that you had some kind of dots connected there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's It's so fascinating to go. But then also to get excited about where the rest of your life is going to go about where your business is going to go because we forget that in the day-to-day -day moments that that hey this person that you met at this party or in this networking thing or even just a, a friend of a friend or this book yeah. that you picked up or this podcast that you happen to listen to sparks something that sends you in if not a totally new direction in maybe a slightly new direction that just opens up whole new worlds to you yeah yeah absolutely so I know you started with copywriting. You had some great influences in your life with your parents. Um, and now, right, circuit sales system. Um, I I want to learn a little bit more from you particularly because obviously you're going to know it better than me. But um, one of the fascinating things that I love about copywriting is how how much really sales. It, it's just, it was like for me in, in my world, you know, growing up as a marketing specialist and evolving what that looked like for me into now what we do here at Vim, which is branding and realizing, you know, they are totally different, but they play well in the sandbox together. And I think mm -hmm. that's, that is the, the same analogy for copywriting and sales is like, they are completely different lanes, but they, not only do they play well in the sandbox together, you have to be in the same sandbox to, to be successful at one or the other. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, fundamentally, copywriting is a vehicle for sales. It's a vehicle for, it's copywriting if um, if your audience is a little bit unfamiliar with the term, which I would not blame them at all. Um, but copywriting is, it's marketing and advertising writing. It's designed to get people to take an action. It's designed to be persuasive. It's a little bit different from content writing, which is mm -hmm. um, your blog post, that kind of thing, which are designed to educate, to entertain, or to inspire. Um, I won't go too far down any of that stuff, but <laughs> But you're trying to get people to take action. You're trying to persuade them. And it's a very specific, there's very specific strategies and very specific ways of doing it, which is why when I got into, when I created the course, I, I you know, before anybody creates anything, you should know what else is out there. And the interesting thing is that there wasn't, and that, to my knowledge, there still isn't, you, you can't major in copywriting in college. You can major in marketing, you can major in advertising, you can major in graphic design, but you can't major in the other side of it in copywriting, which, right. and stuff I know that you know that, that copywriting, your messaging 
is foundational. It is fundamental to having a successful business. If you can't Amen. get your messaging right, you can't have, your business won't go anywhere. You know, you could have the most amazing product or most amazing service, but if you can't convey to your target audience why they should want it, then your business isn't going to go anywhere. Um, so it's, it was just kind of amazing to me. It's still, again, please universities do not offer this. <laughs> I like my business, um, but it's just amazing to me that it's so important. And there, there wasn't until of course, uh, an ability to get, to get trained in it in a way that taught really excellent copywriting skills, but also taught how to build a copywriting business, you know, not yeah. just, okay, now you know how to copy. Uh, now you're not, no, you, <laughs> now you know how to write copy. Best of mm. luck to you. But right. here's how you actually build a business, build a career with it. Yeah. I think even if colleges did start offering it, that you would have still an incredible business behind you because what we learn in our college courses are are not experiential learning it's mm -hmm. it's dare i say cover your ass learning it's like the bare minimum bones yeah. like you need to know this and sometimes yeah. not even that there's so many credentials and courses that are out there that really are just if i don't teach you this i'm not you know again, yeah. cover, covering your ass a little bit. Yeah. Um, and so I think there's just so much power and that's one of my favorite and I don't want to blame or credit COVID, but I think it, it opened up this door. Cause you, you, like you said, you've been doing this since 2012. I think this idea of online courses, learning, freelance business, all of this world. And I'm not, trust me, I love my peopling. I need my energy from human to human as much as anyone else. But this door that has been swung open to give us the permission slip that you can do things and look and look differently than your parents looked than anyone else looked than looked five years ago is a blessing and and courses like yours are the absolute pathway into being successful in that space mm -hmm. so i want to i i've I want to dive right in. I just want to, we've talked so much about you and I love the journey you've had. I love the passion you put behind your business. And I want listeners to have a really good sense of, you know, what is the circuit sales system? If they're, if they're an entrepreneur, a desire, a desire, an interested desiring to be a copywriter. They're an entrepreneur. They're in any space where the circuit sales system is going to support mm -hmm. them. I want them to hear the nitty gritty from you about what that is. And then what's a really good way to get into your world? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the circuit sales system is really the system I developed to sell the copywriting program and then later the, the freelancing program. From like 2012 to 2018, I tried all the things, right? I tried live launching. I tried making it a membership. I tried and I couldn't consistently make sales. So I finally, and it was a great program. I, ha I was having students write into me and tell me I was changing their lives again. Thank goodness. Otherwise I wouldn't have made it to the end of 2018 where I finally went, okay, what do I know? Instead of trying all the stuff they tell me I have to try, what do I know? Well, I know messaging like nobody's business. I know customer psychology like nobody's business. I also know that it's risky to base a business on live launching. I need something that is going to make consistent sales regularly. And I also want it to be automated. I don't want to spend all of my time begging people to purchase. I want to give my time to the people who have actually paid. Uh, who, who paid and I could teach them. Um, so in 2018, so I developed the system that I now call the circuit sales system, which we now teach to um, other course creators, other program creators, uh, even some one-to-one -one service providers. Um, but in 20. 18 with and again at that point I was just selling the the comprehensive copywriting academy in 2018 I made forty thousand dollars on that course which was the most I had made and was very proud of myself uh, but in 2019 I made two hundred sixty eight thousand and then in 2020 I made 1.6 million so I 40 x by implementing the circuit sales system I 40 x my revenue in over just a little over two years. And then obviously we've continued to grow since then and have added more brands, but it was, it, if there's, there's one takeaway, it's take a look at your businesses and don't just take a look at your businesses and evaluate what you're doing and why. I wasted six years of kind of messing around, kind of, you know, maybe not taking my business seriously as a business, 
because I just thought, all right, well, every, they know, they know, they know more. And, you know, these big names are saying to do this. And instead of going, all right, well, what do I know? And even just aside from what do I know, what's, what's working and what's not working instead of leaning into the sunk cost fallacy of like, all right, well, I've already put so much time and effort into this. I guess I'm just going to keep digging away at it. If something's not working, it's not working. And there are other options out there. Yeah. And just for clarity, you work with course creators, aspiring copywriters. What is the circuit sales system's ideal target so the listeners know? So aspiring copywriters should absolutely check out the Comprehensive Copywriting Academy, our Filthy Rich Writer brand. Um, but course creators, group program creators, um, coaches, like I said, one-to-one -one service providers, even people who do, who do uh, provide their, their programs live. If they mm -hmm. do, you know, cohorts, cohorts throughout the year, they can still automate their sales. They can still have sales coming in every day, leave that chaos and unpredictability of, of live launching behind. Awesome. Okay. I just um, want to make sure we had that clarity. Yes. And thank you. I know, I know you have a lot of really great places that you exist, but if someone's interested and they're listening and they just want like the, the deep dive into your world to really mm -hmm. like to get a little more than what we can give today, where, yeah. where should we send them? Yes. The number one place to check out is just go to circuitselling.com and then sign up for, sign up for the video and you okay. get to, to dig in and see it from that side circuitselling.com. We'll make sure that's in the show notes so that you guys can get into Nikki's world. Um, I'll tell you that um, this this is obviously from the branding perspective. You guys know that I'm always preaching that the foundation, this why, this message, this deeper stuff is, is absolutely the thread that will hold. It's the way that we're doing business now. You can't not do it. It just really, you don't, yeah. You know, and no knock to Nikki, right? She's learned. You don't want to wait six years yeah. to be like, ah, oh, I should have done this all this time. So I absolutely applaud that you're you're preaching and teaching that. Um, but also when it comes straight down to it, right? Absolutely business is about the heart behind it. But there is no business if we're not profiting, if we're not making mm -hmm. sales. Yeah. So take the best of both worlds. Go to circuitselling.com. Get into this, you know, world of Nikki. Get, take this free course. Free course? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Right. Get, get started with the free course. Um, I just, I just believe in what you do. Uh, I love the passion you've put behind it. And I really hope that the listeners take advantage. I've said this before on other shows, but when our listener, excuse me, when our guests come on and offer something, um, it, it is, even if it's a course and it's, it's their time, their brain and their experience. And so it might seem like, Oh, here's a, another link I'm going to go to. It is truly a gift guys. This is truly a gift that these business owners and my guests come on to share with you. There, there, it, There's so much value behind them. So I just really want to make sure that you listen to the show. Yes, thank you. You guys are amazing. But also take action. All of this great passion, these, this intention that Nikki brought today and that she brings and bleeds through her business is only as valuable as you use it to be actionable in your world, in your business, in your brand. So that's my 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 like plug, my, my, uh, what do I want to say? My soapbox, my soapbox for you listeners, go take advantage of this. Nikki, I really appreciate you coming on. I have one last question. What is next in your world? What is next? Um, creating more, more courses to solve more problems for our audiences. There's, we have such a long list of stuff on all of the brands that we're creating. Our team is so excited. I wish there were more hours in the day. There's so much yeah. good stuff coming. I could only imagine every, every graduating class. And I don't know how you do your enrollments, but I can only imagine every single one is like, I need help with this. And I need help with this. And your mind is just like, I could do that. I could do that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Well, that's exciting. I really appreciate you being here. I can't wait to follow along on your journey with all of this new stuff that you have brewing. Um, yeah. And I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me and congratulations on hundred episodes. Yay. That's true. All right, guys, until next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the passion on purpose podcast. I truly hope you got a lot of value out of this episode. So if you did, please rate review and share. If you are interested in being a guest on the show, whether a leader or an expert, please go to getvim.com forward slash podcast 
and you will find our application page or reach out to me directly and I can give you more information. 